All right, everybody, welcome back to the second episode of the Washed Athlete Podcast. Uh, so, boys, how's it been? It's been a while. It has been a while, uh, besides the people who recorded the last episode of yeah. Extra Cycle. So, first episode of Extra Cycle is out. Make sure you go watch it about Cobra Kai, which is what I've been doing in the last couple of days. I watched all of it in one day. I know Andres was getting a little bit of crap for that. Not watching it in two days. Hey, Dan. Yeah, I'm. I, hey, listen. I I so I just like to you know really soak. Let the show soak in. I don't want to rush it all. I want to actually pay attention to what I'm watching. Not watching it at a 1.5 time speed. Was it Raj? Yeah, and I still got all the information I needed. Nah, you can because you can watch. Well, the best thing about Cobra Kai is you can watch like four seasons of the show in like a week, and it won't. It's not even that hard. Yeah. So Andres, I don't. Yeah, Andres, I don't think you have a very good argument right here, to be completely also, honest. <laughs> let's convert your time on Fortnite to uh, time watching ne- the Netflix shows you're oh, supposed God. to, and you'd, you'd be done. Hey, listen, listen. About Fortnite, 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 Fortnite is back. Like, it, this winter, you know, oh, they, they had a pretty cool update. The Spider-Man update is pretty, it was, it was fun. You know, all the boys were playing back home, so had to hop on, catch a few wins, you know, the vibes. How dare you. But Money Heist, though, is better. <laughs> Hey, I am I am getting into money heist. Money heist is I that is something I have been doing this winter break, and it it it's a good show. The acting is very good. The acting is I will say, although I haven't finished it yet, and I finished Cobra Kai. The acting on Money Heist is fantastic and is better than Cobra Kai. I can say that with ease as of right now. Now. Do, now, do you watch sub or dub? Well, unlike somebody, I like to watch a show in the language it's recorded in. Yeah, I wonder who watched with who audio lag. That? Guess. Well, at least I at least watched oh the show. Oh my god. You watched it in English. <laughs> you didn't watch the show. I don't know. Wait, hold on. So did y'all watch Squid Game? Yes. Yes. So did yes. you watch it in Part Co- of it. Korean or did you watch it in English? I watched it in Korean. Korean, Korean with subs. Oh, really? I so I it in English. Okay, <laughs> I cuz I watched it in English like in the beginning. Well, I, I guess I watched it in English the whole time. But then, like, I thought about it, and I was like, oh, I really should have watched this in Korean, because, like, the way, like, the, they, the characters talk is, like, completely, like, not how, like, you would talk in English. And it's, like, exactly. kind of, t- it takes you out of the, like, the TV show a little bit, where I'm, like, like, I, Ollie's always saying, like, sir and whatnot, and it really throws you off, because, like, oh, we, like, in English you wouldn't talk like that, but that's, like, it's just the bad dub. Mm-hmm. But the, wait, what did you guys wait, think about you screen? say sir? You wouldn't say sir? No, but like he, no. Says, he says it to an excessive level. Like not like okay. he doesn't say he doesn't say, "Sir, I need this." He just says like it. It's like five times in one sentence, and it's like yeah, okay. it's, it drives it's just like insane. how the language works is like every time he's like saying it, it's like supposed to refer back to like the person that he's talking to. So like it just doesn't make sense like translated. But like if you just okay. like watch the subtitles, they just like actually translate to what it's supposed to be. Gotcha. You guys like Squid Game? It was good. It was I, it, good, was, yeah. it was good. I like I think it's just one of those shows where it's like it was it was like good and then like all of like the entire world got in on it and then it's like okay, now it's like being heralded as like the greatest show ever created. It's like okay, let's let's calm down. It's a good show. It's not that good. <laughs> yeah, I think it was a pretty good show. Um like a good uh I guess breath of fresh air. Um you know, I think that um, there it ha- clearly had a big impact on like the world and other content creators. Where you would mm-hmm. see like certain YouTubers making like specific YouTube videos about um, you know the show. Um, you could I just think say Mr. Like, Beast, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> just throw the bush there. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Beast, for example. Uh, I mean, he did a, like a phenomenal job with his YouTube video. Um, I mean, I'm pretty sure. I mean, although it's clearly different. Um, and it was easier for him to get the views. I mean, he got like more views on that um, YouTube video than Cobra. I mean, not Cobra Kai. Um, uh, Squid Games did like in its entirety. Um, then again, it's a paid um, subscription, and there's more episodes, so it's different, but still an interesting uh, concept. It's crazy what Mr. Beast did. I didn't watch the video for a long time because I was watching a uh, Squid Game with my girlfriend, and then. Um, it took us a while to get to the end of it. So then I was like, 
when I, I didn't watch the video when it came out because I didn't want to have anything spoiled for me. Um, and then I watched it at the end. I was like, this is like really good. Like the quality of it. And it has like, I think it's up to 158 million views and it's probably gone up since I watched it. So just the amount of reach that like one YouTube video had because it like went off of the TV show is just absolutely nuts. Well, yeah, besides sure. all that, what's everybody else been up to? Anything interesting? I went uh, to Broadway. Oh, oh shit. Uh, okay. What'd you watch? Uh, we watched Lion King on Broadway. So that was my, uh, one of my Chris- Christmas gifts from my dad. Uh, me and my girlfriend went to New York two days, and then we saw Lion King on Broadway, um, which is super cool. So that's the second show I've seen on Broadway. Um, I saw Aladdin and then Lion King. So Lion King's better than Aladdin in terms of like production value, but I prefer the story of Aladdin over the story of Lion King. I don't know if that's like a hot take. Or... Yeah, I don't know if that is a hot take. That's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I wouldn't know enough about like theater to actually like know if that's a hot yeah. take. But um, yeah, I, I remember the one time I, the only time I was ever going to go to a Broadway show, I was going to go see Lion King. And then it got canceled the day that we uh, were going to go. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> damn. So, I was like, maybe like seven or eight. And like from that point on, I was like, I hate theater. Like, I hate <laughs> and then like finally now, like as I've gotten older, less jaded from my youth, I've actually like really grown to enjoy it because like. My my school had like a really good theater program, and like the the kids that um, did it were just unbelievably good. Like there's the one guy that I actually uh, I hung out with last, I think maybe like last break. I think um, he was actually on Broadway for a while. He was doing one Ooh. of the shows there, um, yeah, um, which was dope. And then, of course now it's like, oh, this is what I've been missing out on the entire time. <laughs> cool. Yep. I think theater is one of those things that like. When you're, and there's a lot of these things in life, but like when you're young, you just don't appreciate it. So, like, if I went to a Broadway show when I was like 10, I would have, like, I wouldn't have made sense to me. I wouldn't have, like, appreciated, like, what they were doing on stage. And now that I'm, like, older and I, like, go watch a show, I'm like, this is, like, really freaking good. Like, the production value for Lion King is just off the, off the charts. But, like, from everything from costumes to, like, the, the singing and the choreography, it, it's just nuts. And, it's just one of those things that when you're young, you just don't appreciate as much until you get older. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's that's really dope, Justin. I mean, anybody have anything else that uh, they were doing over break? I know it's probably a little bit tough to try and one up that one, but I slept. I mean, who didn't? I mean, yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. I have, what, what else did I do? Really? <laughs> eat, eat food, sleep, go to the gym, come home. Oh, yeah, that's that. That sounds about like what, what my schedule was, too. Yeah, yeah we gotta get into gym work. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Funnily enough, me and Raj is uh, are, so basically at Pitt, um, they pushed back the move-in dates for certain oh, uh, places, and the gym is closed up until like the latest move-in date. And me and Raj could move in whenever we want, and our move-in is contingent on the gym being open. So we're just using our gyms at home and waiting for the one at school to be open to move there. Why would I ever go to a place that doesn't have a gym? Exactly. Really, really never would do that. We could just full send Planet Fitness memberships again. Absolutely no. not. That was terrible. PTSD, that yeah, was... Didn't you guys cancel that super fast? Yeah. Very, very quick. Oh my god, it was terrible. It was, was a joke. Oh, Dude, those Smith machines were crazy. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> yeah. A lunk alarm. But, oh, well, I, would... I, I really want to go to one of those and set off the lunk alarm <laughs> so too. badly. Like, so badly. Like, I want to just, like, not even do, like, something, like, really heavy weight, but just be just a... F- like see if anybody <laughs> will like do anything about it like just start doing power cleans like next to a smith machine and just see what oh happens. my gosh <laughs> like just see what happens smith machine power cleans exactly like, oh my I, god i, I mean, go you horribly could. wrong dude oh my god that'd be so bad you have to go forward to, like, though yeah because like if you tried to like flip your hands you would just lock the lock machine it. yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> just directly into the chin oh my god that'd be terrible I don't get I don't get Planet Fitness's like willingness to like not put in um free weights because like because when it's I was a gym for, it's a gym for everyone. Gym for yeah, people I, is what it is. <laughs> Cuz I don't get it because like they would just bring in more people like, if they had a bench and other things there like they're pretty cheap and it wouldn't it wouldn't be like a bad um 
a bad thing to do, but then like they just don't they get they're missing out on a whole population of people who don't even want to like sit off the hunk alarm but just want to bench. Yeah, I think I, I of course I joke that it's a gym for fat people and it's not because it's actually just a really cheap gym and like if you're trying to do it on like a budget, whatever, it's actually really good. But the annoying part is how like they serve like pizza and donuts yeah. there sometimes, yeah. and it's yeah. like this, and it's like, oh, it's a, it's a judgment free zone, but you can't lift any heavy weights because that's making people intimidated. It's like no one goes to the, no one cares what other people are doing at the gym. It's like if you're being obnoxious, yeah, I get that, but like the entire point of a gym is to go there and get better. It's like if you see someone lifting weights, it's like, yeah, they're at the gym. <laughs> like, I don't know what you expected them to do. But, like, serving donuts and, like, pizza at the gym, that seems counterintuitive. Like, exactly. Oh, it completely <laughs> is. It, Dude, apparently, it, it's it, the it, first it, Monday of every month. Yeah. It's dirty bulk season. Well, I, think, dirty like, bulk. I think the whole point of it, though, is, like, since they're trying to make it a judgment-free zone, they're like, oh, you don't need to be on a super strict diet, and you can, like, have a cheat day. So they're really trying to, like, push that ideology forward with, like, their cheat meal first Monday of the month. <laughs> Literally bringing it to the gym. Why wait? <laughs> Just eat it at the gym. <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting take right there. The worst is like if you eat it before your workout and you're just like, oh my god, oh like no, no. oh no, Dude, I gotta tell no, you guys, that's that's what we got. Okay, wait, Raj, before you go, just, okay, that's go what ahead. We gotta, do. we gotta eat an entire pizza and then we're like, gotta plan it. <laughs> that's what we need to do. We found oh it. <laughs> there, we, there it is. No, nah, but at um, my gym here, my, one of my friends, so he was on the hack squat machine, and he started eating a Wawa shorty in the middle of his set. <laughs> oh my god. Why? Like, so, sandwich? What is so, that? Um, it's, a, it's, it's like a small sandwich. Yeah. From yeah, Wawa. Yeah. So basically, okay. we, have the, we have these coupon codes, which we call our food stamps to get free shorties from oh Wawa. Oh my god. <laughs> the code never expires, so it's amazing. So we made one of our friends who's a senior in high school go grab like four of them. And then he, when he comes back, he just, my friend just takes one from him and starts eating it like halfway through his set. And he's just calling it an intra workout meal. That is That's awesome. insane. <laughs> Getting the carbs in. <laughs> Get the carbs in. <laughs> That's what Dude, I would you immediately <laughs> if I started eating a sandwich. <laughs> no, I have a terrible stomach for working out. Like, I mean, I. So other people on this podcast like lift and I'm like a runner, but like I ate like two gummy worms bef- like before I was r- was running. Yes, like I think it was like two days ago because like they were sitting there and I was like they look good, so I had two and I was like oh it's not gonna upset my stomach. It's two gummy worms. Mid run I'm like burping and I'm like gosh like I can feel I can feel these gummy worms like not sitting well in my stomach. I'm like it's two gummy worms. Meanwhile like there's other runners out there who like slam down a pizza pizza at mile six and they're like fine. <laughs> I'm like, what the heck? Like, it's ridiculous. No, I was the but... same way whenever, like, I was playing football. It was like, I couldn't eat before any of the games because I, like, I used to do it, like, when I was, like, younger, like, in middle school, whatever. <laughs> I remember the one time I showed up, like, I, like, ate breakfast, whatever, showed up to the game, immediately puked right before we were oh. on the field. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to go play. And I was like, I'm never doing that again. And it wasn't even like my stomach was upset, whatever. I think it was like the nerves and like everything that just like kind of got to me because I was like playing whatever and I was like 12. And I just immediately <laughs> puked. And all my friends were like, holy sh- like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I don't know, man. I guess we gotta go out there. I'm in like full pads and everything. It was so bad. Yeah, Justin, I feel that with uh, the running. I used to run cross country and uh, first day back of summer training, like uh, before my senior year, I decided to eat like three or four waffles before running. And then I decided to run three miles first day back uh, in 90 degree weather. And right at the end of my run, I ran behind some sort of shack and just (laughs) Just basically disposed. Yeah, let let it let all those waffles fly. (laughs) Oh, man. Yeah, I think the stuff that like I got got away with as a kid like in sports it's just ridiculous like, i never used to like, think about how much i was like hydrating before like a track meet or something or like a soccer game when i was little but now it's like if i don't have this much water if i don't eat this many hours before my run it's like oh it's just gonna be a terrible thing meanwhile like i was, I was like in middle school i'd like eat a piece of pizza like right before a soccer game and not drink one water the entire day and i'd feel fine oh my god Oh, that can't yeah, be as have... bad as one of our pregame meals being fried chicken. Oh, oh yeah, no, I remember pregame that. Pregame meal. 
Yeah, that was a, the day before one of the games at night. They gave us we had fried chicken. Why? No, uh, the day of when we uh, for what I want to say my freshman and maybe like halfway through my sophomore year, um, we have like uh, what like chicken and waffles. Like that was something we had. You're for lying. What? I'm not. And then eventually we got a new strength and conditioning uh, or a high. He calls himself a high performance coach. So we got ourselves a high performance coach. And he put an end to that as soon as he like really got into the program. So we have like a balanced meal, um, typically pasta, some form of like chicken, and then like vegetables. Um, instead yeah, of it's a pregame meal, yeah, yeah, like that would yeah. make sense. I suppose the chicken and waffles, bro, that would sit like a brick. <laughs> oh hey, man, that collapsed though, and especially like I wasn't playing freshman or sophomore year, so like that was fantastic. Like I loved that. You just shut up, get a free meal, and go that's, watch a football game on the sideline. That's pretty nice. Exactly. It yeah, was so nice. nice. Yeah. Man, sometimes the best feeling is just when you're like sitting on the sidelines, like all dressed up, but you know you're not going in. It's like it's a good feeling sometimes. Like it sucks because you're not out there playing, but like it, there, it's b- b- vibes on the bench, and like you're all like suited up. You're like, yeah, I'm gonna go in, but only if like ten people get injured. Dude, I was the other or way around. <laughs> Oh yeah, well no, because like I would, I had like such a. I mean, first of all, my football team horrible. Let's get that straight. We were so bad, but it was so funny because they would always my my sophomore year, they had me starting on varsity and on JV. So I would be like, it would be like Saturday. I would be playing at like the varsity, whatever, and then I think it was like Monday or Monday we'd have like the JV games, whatever. And it was like, I would go in for like two series on JV, get like 15 tackles. They would like bench me. And then I'm just like sitting there. I'm just like a coach on the sideline, like in full pads. <laughs> it was so funny. Because like the one time like I took my helmet off and my coach like gave me the clipboard because it was like <laughs> JV. Literally no one cared. And I just started calling the defense. <laughs> and I'm just like, this is so much more entertaining than playing right now. Like this is incredible. The funny thing is, that's a, that's not. I don't think you can do that in New Jersey. If oh you no, you varsity. absolutely cannot. You absolutely <laughs> cannot start on varsity and play on JV. Yeah. You are not allowed yeah. to do that. But they had me do that for like eight weeks. Oh my god. Yeah. Just yeah, imagine just... the ref from your varsity game comes to your yeah, JV game. He's like, like, wait, he's like, wait a minute. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, dude, that was so. Oh my god. We had like multiple players that were like seniors on JV. It's like, what are we doing? Yeah, if you're a se- if you were a senior on our soccer team, you could not play JV. Like it was either like you're getting cut or you're gonna sit on the varsity bench or start if you're good. But the the big issue was that if you sucked, then you couldn't play JV as a senior. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <sighs> so you just sitting there watching the game, got the best seats in the house. Yeah, that's what I did my senior year. It, I mean, it sucks at first because you're like want to play, so you like play hard and practice so you. Can, but like game days are fun because like didn't matter what i like if i prepared or not because i was just gonna sit on the bench anyway (laughs) and like and bench mob is fun like the brooklyn nets like if you watch them play basketball and like (laughs) oh like i think it was 2018 like it's such a vibe yeah bench mob is always hilarious for my lacrosse team we we were absolute maniacs on the (laughs) sidelines We would do the uh, the Tuscan Raiders celebration was probably one of oh, my, my favorites. Oh my god! Because all because like all of our like because like it, obviously in the cross you have like the guys with like the shorter poles and then the long sticks which are like six foot poles whatever. So you get all the defenders on the sidelines. It looks like we have like the Tuscan Raider thing. <laughs> We're just screaming. It was so good. It's like JB was such a riot. Oh my god, that's wild. Speaking of Tuscan Raiders, has anyone else watched? Boba, the book of Boba Fett, yet? Yes. Not yet. Not yet. What are our, yet. What are our non-spoiler thoughts? Because I'm pretty like neutral on it. So, well, a lizard is a hallucinogen, apparently. Yeah. Yes. That that's that was that was okay, a trip. What, your your review of the show, Raj. <laughs> that, <laughs> that the yeah, drugs they do. It. So far, I feel like they're talk about his past a little too much. Not, it's like everything they're doing right now is about his past, and like we've got like three minutes of what's actually going on. Yeah, 
I mean, I feel like the first few episodes being, I, I would hope that they don't do that for the entirety of the show, but for the first few episodes, I think that's fine. Cause like he came in with no context in the Mandalorian. So I think that this is necessary. Yeah. I mean, they leave us off with like, Oh, how did Boba Fett get out of the Sarlacc pit? So like they have a lot of explaining to do because he just shows up with Fennec and is like, hello, I'm here. So it's good that they're going back to the past, but no, they're going to have to create some urgency because you, ca- I care a lot more about those flashbacks than what's actually happening um, in current time. But for Jacob and Peter, I would say just wait till the whole season drops if you want to, yeah. because I mean, the, most of those shows are better as a binge than they yeah, are. You're really not are. missing much. Yeah, I agree. Word. So it's not going to be like having no wait for um, the new episode for um, each Marvel TV show to come out. It's not going to be like that. No, it is like right now. Yeah. I mean, I mean, like I'm saying like like that. Well, yeah, that's how it's structured. But I'm saying like, it's not a show that makes you at the end, that leaves you at the end of your seat each episode wanting to watch more. Like it's probably better as a binge as of right now. Definitely. Right. Like, I mean, the anticipation factor. Yeah. Yeah. And, like that's the way not. the Mandalorian was. And, like it wasn't like the most groundbreaking show ever. It was just a good TV show. It's like yeah, you absolutely. could kind of just like wait for it to come out, whatever. But yeah. Well, one of the things I've been doing has been watching the um, Daredevil show. So yes, was, <laughs> I finished that. So uh, yeah, um, Peter. Mikey. To answer your question from a couple podcasts ago, you asked me if it would be uh, better than Arrow. I think yes. you already know my answer. I swear to God. Oh, please, please. Please. Don't. Don't. Oh, don't do more. this to yourself. Don't do arrow, this. This, don't do this. this arrow propaganda Airways. needs to stop. <clears throat> please. Wrong. Okay, let's let him speak. What do you think I'm going to say? Oh, my. <laughs> Come I on. Think, I, think, I love I think, Arrow. Come on. I think you are going to... I understand where you're saying uh, there's elements of the Dark Knight, though. Like, um, especially the, the, what? I would want to say the third season, or the Dark Knight Rises specifically. Maybe not, like, um, at first when you were saying that, I was was thinking you were talking in terms of quality. But in terms of, like, like, the plot, there were parts that reminded me of, like, the Dark Knight and the Dark Knight Rises. Not Batman Begins, but the, um, you know, the the two I just mentioned. So, um, but I mean, I thought it was a very good show. I mean, it gets me even more excited for the next, you know, couple of shows to come out or the next, um, you know, uh, you know, movies or TV shows or whatever that's going to involve uh, Matt Murdock and, uh, you know, Kingpin and all that. So, you know, I thought it was a very good show, but I've just got to stay loyal to, you know, Arrow. Jacob, I need, you, I, I need you to hear you say it. Like, yeah, I, it. I need you to say just it. say it. Oh, Arrow is better. You're wrong. Oh, oh You're just wrong. <laughs> You're wrong. Like, there's what's there's wrong like a PC? No, but I just know I just hate Arrow because you okay. like it. Why do you hate Arrow? Because you like it so much. Okay, so that okay. Yeah. Jacob, there's like there is like a part of my soul that just died when you, you know. said that. Hey, at least I watched the show. At least, at I least, said okay. I'll, g- I'll give you credit. You watched the show, but like. I, why? Why is Arrow a better show than Daredevil? Like, give I me like a re- no. Give me a reason why. Um, I liked the characters more. Um, I look like I think Al Oliver is more of a badass character than uh, Daredevil, even though Daredevil is pretty badass. Um, I think that. Um. I will give you this. I mean, since Arrow has more seasons, it has more of an opportunity to be successful and as well as an opportunity to like not be so. So I guess you could say the lowest point of Arrow was, you know, it was worse than the lowest point of uh, Daredevil. But I mean, that's probably to be, uh, you know, expected. Um, but I mean, I like the characters more. I thought that like the best of Arrow um was better than the best of Daredevil. I think that, I mean, oh, then again, wow. <laughs> my, well, think, also, you've got to think of it like this. I mean, I think the best season of Arrow was season five. Daredevil not, never got to a season five. Um, so insult. I was more, already, yeah, so I was, uh, there was more of an emotional attachment <laughs> uh, priest to it than there was with uh, Daredevil. So I'm going to pick okay. Arrow. So yes. do you think that the peaks of Arrow are better than the peaks. Of, so I, I haven't watched Daredevil, but like, 
from everything I've heard, and I'm gonna start watching it. And I don't really like Arrow that much. I mean, it's it's solid for the first couple of seasons, but like just thought experiment for everyone right now. How much points percentage points higher on audience do you think Daredevil is than um, Arrow? Oh, are we going like Rotten Tomatoes right here? Yeah, Rotten Tomatoes audience scores, not the critics. Solid 30, 30, 30. I'd probably, I'd probably oh, say I like no 20, 25. It's 26%. So you saying that Daredevil is not not better is quite You're just big. objectively wrong. Yeah. He whipped up the statistics on your ass. Yeah. What, do you, what, what you got to say about that? That's an audience score. I mean, it's you can't say my opinion is incorrect, you know? Yes, I can. Yeah, we can. Okay, then. <laughs> well, your argument's flawed. Uh, like, in terms of using the number of seasons, that, that's just a flawed argument. You can't really use that here. And the reason why that uh, Daredevil, Punisher, all the Netflix Marvel shows were canceled was because Disney was making Disney Plus, so they didn't want to have those shows running on Netflix that are then not supporting them on Disney Plus. It wasn't anything to do with the quality of any of the shows. Oh, it was well, literally just because. Anything to do with that. So you're knocking it on something it couldn't control. Well, I I thought oh, I had acknowledged okay, that. I thought okay. I had acknowledged that. I thought I had like made that clear. Well, you but then you keep saying, "Oh, well, it's got five seasons." So it's like, "Well, you can't use that argument then." I thought yeah. I made that clear, though, that, you know, it might be out of the show's control, but, I mean, I thought that the peaks of the show were uh, in Arrow. Like, I enjoyed season five. Like, I really thought season five of Arrow was really, really good. Um, I would say, I mean, then again, I will say, I mean, again, season four of Arrow, not really good. Really was not that good. Um, there was, like, a power mismatch, but at the same time, um, I think that the show really redeemed itself in season five. Um, I mean, Daredevil didn't have the opportunity for season five, but I mean, I thought that the best of Arrow, you know, I preferred it to the best of Daredevil. I think what is the biggest problem with TV shows as a whole is they're not willing to end it when they should. Um, mm-hmm. it's like what that's what makes TV shows like, um, like bad for me is when they start to like add on seasons when. They already had something good. Like even something I'm not gonna talk about Cobra Kai in length. We already had a podcast to that, but like they're starting to move on to season five, and I'm like, when are they starting to like make these seasons just for the money versus quality? It's one of the things I love about Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad is like one of the best TV show I've ever watched, and they were willing to just end it. Like they could have done so much more with the storyline, they could have like stretched it for eons, but they were like, you know what? Our story is gonna be contained to three seasons, I think there is, and that's it. Yeah, that's that's actually really true because it's like they're not making a TV show for the money. They're making a TV show to tell a story, and like they knew when their story was done, they didn't push it past that. Unlike some TV shows, Arrow. Yeah. Um, but well, they also have the source uh, material. Uh, <laughs> Both of these well, shows have source material that allows it to go as far as it does. You know, well, um, we still you knew the quality still was declining. You knew yeah. that that show was falling off a cliff. Season Take four was not. Yes. Who's still alive? Who's still alive? Or is that your argument? Yeah, who's still alive? Still alive. <laughs> well, wow. We can't. We can't do spoilers, Pharaoh. Yeah, spoiler. Yeah, I know. Bro, that's that's show, who cares? Who cares? Wow. Dude, bro. Dude, this show's been out for forever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> wow, Raj. Low blow. My bad. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wait, hold on. So interesting. Uh, Topic is what is everyone's favorite TV show they've watched? Oh, oh okay. Um, hang on. Wow. Let me think. Going to the I'll start like I just mentioned it. Mine's Breaking Bad. I think I don't know if everyone's watched it here, but if if you haven't watched it, you're listening to the podcast. Like, please go watch Breaking Bad. It's like not just a story about like a drug dealer. It's like a very deep like interlook at like people's personalities, what's going on in their outside life, and how that affects like, the decisions they make. And I think it's just like. Does a great job, and like I haven't rewatched it, but I'm, it's because I'm almost scared that it's gonna like make the experience of watching it for the first time work. Mm-hmm. Jesse, he turned himself into a pickle. <laughs> um, Jesse, <laughs> Jesse. Um, I no, I, I absolutely, I totally agree with you, Justin. Breaking Bad, definitely. I, I, I would just agree with you, but I'll, I'll throw something different into the mix. 
Um, I would honestly, like, honestly, I would probably say one of my favorite shows. I mean, like, based on nostalgia, I mean, you could say something like Star Wars The Clone Wars, yeah. but like, I know the show yeah. is, so, yeah. it's like, again, it's one of those where it's like, the highs are so high, like, the storytelling is incredible, but again, it, like, originally was a show made for kids, and there are some episodes that are just insufferable. <laughs> like, yeah, like, just they don't so age bad. that well. They're just so bad. Um, well, I was trying to, I was trying to watch it. Like, yeah. like last year and i was telling you guys i was like guys i can't get through this i was like it's the bad. first couple seasons are like actually bad like <laughs> yeah. i think it's like until because it well because it was like, good it, yeah because it's like it's an anthology so like, you don't have to watch it in order until like i think what is that like four through seven i guess is like actually when they start yeah. to like continue yeah. a narrative yeah but like i think I it's like so, right yeah. up until the second battle of geonosis is it's like bad there's like certain episodes that like you you can watch that are like it's like the ones about like Domino Squad and then oh, yeah. like the rookie like whatever. There's like certain ones that you can like pick out. But there's some that are in there. It's just like this is so bad. Like this is unbelievably terrible. So there's a couple seasons that aren't ranked on Rotten Tomatoes, but like the first, season one has a sixty nine percent, and then season three has a hundred five, six, seven, all at so just like. They don't have season four and two ranked, but just to see that like season one, it takes time to build up. And I, I, I think I've made it pretty far. I just kind of like stopped watching. Like maybe I'll get back on it one day, but there's just so much like content just being put out and like the fandom atmosphere with TV shows that it's like Mm -hmm. just watching TV shows on their own now is like tough. Yeah. I feel like if you didn't watch that shows, like if you didn't watch Clone Wars as a kid, you're not going to, um, yeah, like it won't be the same. I feel yeah, like that's I agree. The main conclusion, except yeah. for the Siege of Mandalore, that is some of the best, some of the best written like material. Like, that's I've ever legit. Some of the best seen. Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. gotta yeah. be. Yeah, because right, that's why Andres. they they had a different intro for that too. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. 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 I was say Andres' favorite TV show. Clone Wars was coming to mind, but I to say something different. Uh, I don't think anyone would say this because I might be the only one that's watched it. Uh, Ted Lasso I watched recently, and that is oh. a great show, very good show because it it um it revolves about around uh, the Premier League in England, which is one of my favorite leagues to watch, and and Jason Sudeikis is in it, and he is hilarious. So just combining those two things, it's it's a great show. Definitely would recommend. I watched that show in a, a week. Uh, it's two seasons, ten episodes each. It's very good. I've heard a lot of good things about that show. I've heard like the, it's like actually it's like not only is like the comedy really good, but like it's actually a good story too. Yes, yes, definitely. I wanted to watch. Um, I've just I've heard fantastic things about the show, so I'm mm-hmm. glad that it also gets your recommendation. Yes, hundred <clears throat> percent. Yeah, for me, uh, Grey's Anatomy. Oh, shut <laughs> up! Get out. <laughs> no, nah, actually though, um. Uh, also, Ted Lasso's on like whatever that Apple TV Plus subscription. Yeah. There was another. There was another show that I watched on there called The Morning Show. Honestly, oh. I found that I, at first I thought it was like a documentary or something because I didn't read anything. And then as soon as I click into it, halfway through the episode, I'm like, oh shit, damn! Like it like starts exploring like, um, like topics of like sexual misconduct and like show like that going on in the workplace of like a morning show. And like it has Steve Carell in it, uh, Drew Barrymore, I think. Jennifer Aniston. Jennifer Aniston, yeah. And I was like, it has them in the show. Honestly, like, I haven't watched season two yet, but like, I was left on that cliffhanger at the end. What show is this? The Morning Show. Okay. So I, okay. I saw that on Apple TV Plus because like, when I got my Apple TV, I got like, it. So I saw that in Ted Lasso, and I was like, oh, I should watch them. But of course, like, I never got to it. But now I'm like, because I saw that, and I was interested, and now I'm like, oh, is, if it's really good, I might. Yeah, I, I, Apple TV has been bringing out some like actual good shows recently because it's like the Morning Show, Ted Lasso, and I think there's also there's one show that I want to watch. I think it's Invasion. I think that one. I think like the premise of it is like it's like about like an alien invasion, but it's like told from like, mm. multiple different like perspectives where it's like you have like normal people, then you have like different governments like trying to figure out like scientists like and stuff. And I've heard that that's actually mm. really good too. Um, so Apple TV, I mean, who would have guessed? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, Apple TV is bringing the heat. They really are. 
there's also one with uh, Chris Evans too. I forget the name of it, but oh, uh, uh, really? Defending Defending Jacob. That's yeah, the that's one. it. He's defending like a, he's like a lawyer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I watched yeah, one episode yeah. of it, forgot about it, but it was really good. <laughs> Besides the fact, I, for, I mean, I just forgot to watch it, but it was it was really good that first episode. It was so good. I completely forgot about it, but it was so good. No. <laughs> Oh, I think well, they also have like some kind of like space space show like about like getting onto one of the other planets or like Mars or something. I don't know which what it's called, but oh, the Expanse. I think isn't that what that is? Oh, uh, oh, it's called Wait. for all mankind. Oh, oh, that's the alternate history about the moon landing. Oh, I think so. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's a nominee what, for yeah. best drama series right now. I'm looking at. I've seen parts it's, of that. That's actually a really good show. Yeah, and they've got. Oh, let's see how many have. Oh, they've got a season two too, or maybe it's in the works or something. But oh. man, they're re- really not playing around. What is up with Apple TV? Okay, wow, <laughs> bringing the heat. Well, not all the stops. Yeah. I feel like I just need to like go on a complete like Apple TV Plus like binge because they've just got so much. Like even their material now that I don't know about, I'm like it could be really good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, all right, Jacob, did you? Did you settle on your favorite show? Um, we all know what he's gonna say. Yeah, but <laughs> actually, unless no, he surprises don't. us, you don't. You do. You do not actually. I will okay. say that for sure. Um, there's three shows that come to mind. Um, Great. one of them is uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender. Um, yes. Oh my god, yes. that, that, also, that also <laughs> came to mind. That also came to mind. Nostalgia factor. I mean, I would. I've seen it. Um, you know on netflix um you know relatively recently i would say it still holds up so i'd say that's definitely up there for sure um another one that i've seen um gotham um i don't know if any of you guys have raj didn't you uh, say you'd watched a little bit of it yeah it's i've put it up there too it's pretty good yeah i mean i love that show um highly recommend it uh, and then the one that um kind of instantly came to mind was game of thrones um the ending of Game of Thrones was awful. Oh, there was nothing about it that I was really happy with, but I th- think that even considering that, if I could recommend somebody to watch the show, I feel like that t- like speaks to how good of a show it was up until that point. So I think that um, it definitely would get the, um, you know, I think that's definitely in the conversation for one of the top shows, um, considering how... Um, angry people were after the like you know it turned out to be a terrible ending and then hey then again i still highly recommend the show to everybody so yeah those would probably be some of the ones i'm thinking about Jacob, you just brought up like a really interesting like i mean i don't think you did it intentionally but like a very interesting like concept because you said that like the ending speaks like people are upset about the ending and how that like speaks how good of a show it is and that's so true like no one is passionate about like a bad ending if, if the show is ass but like if the show is really good that's when you hear people like talking about like how disappointed they are and like the ending of it and like the finale because finales are always split like all the time with almost with any show people are like oh the finale wasn't good like people were mad about the wandavision finale people were mad about the hawkeye finale people were mad about the loki finale and stuff but that's no, i mean really good shows no, absolutely. Um, and, and I would say that, um, like, I definitely, yeah, I, not to, like, I guess, you know, toot my own horn or whatever, but yeah, no, I knew what I was saying when I said that. Uh, but, like, I would say that the sh- uh, on, like, on top of that, like, I also mentioned, like, the fact that I can still recommend the show, even though the ending was awful. And it's like, we can all, like, every, I would say everybody that's seen the show can agree that the, um, you know, the ending isn't what the majority would have wanted. Um, like that speaks to how good of a show it, it was. So like, yeah, like highly recommend it. I think it was a fantastic show. It's very disappointing that the, um, author George R. R. Martin of the books couldn't, you know, create an ending, um, that would be good, um, for, you know, everybody. Um, or just create an ending in general. So, yeah. Isn't he absolutely. still writing the books now? I don't <laughs> think he's even... Like, well, no, I think the issue was he wasn't. Like, he just wasn't writing the books. So, oh like, God. they were, had to, like, I guess, freehand the entire last season. Um, and maybe a little bit of the other parts. But, I mean, like, as is, like, it is, is in, like, ev- like, you know, normal... Um, or, like, every single thing from, like, books to, like, movies or whatever... 
I mean, there's clearly stuff that happens in the books that didn't happen in the, um, or yeah, that didn't happen in the TV show. So, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. I started the first season a while ago, but I just like I don't have the will to move on. And it's a tedious <laughs> watch. I also, it's not really accessible either. Like it's easier when something's on like Netflix <clears throat> or Disney Plus to just like hop into it, but like. When it's a streaming service that you already don't like use, it just makes it more difficult to go and like invest yourself. Yeah, no, I, I think that's kind of like that's a part that kind of sucks about streaming services now. It's like the their entire point was like, oh, you can cut cable. It's like you all your stuff is in one place that you actually want to watch. It's like, yeah, but now I have to get like eight different streaming services, and yeah. there's a ton of stuff on there that I don't watch, and it's like it's just the same thing now. <laughs> And I still need cable to watch sports. Exactly. If you watch yep. sports, cable is still a must, and it really yep. does stink because I've <laughs> met people. I've met people. Some of my family have like cut cable, and they're always like, "Oh, you should really do it. Like, it saves a ton of money." And I'm like, "But then I couldn't watch like the Sixers play. And then like, if yeah. there's like a game on ESPN, like I'm not gonna be able to watch it unless I get ESPN Plus. But ESPN Plus is it money extra money? And then it's like." Yeah. What's even the point of getting rid of cable? Because sometimes it'll just be a random Harry Potter movie on a channel. And I can watch it there. It's like, I'm not getting rid of cable. Yeah. Because well, I mean, like, that's, yeah, I, I was actually just about to transition, Jacob. Because, yeah. um, like, I was actually just about to start talking about, like, how I was flipping through cable today trying to find where all the, uh, the football games were on. Because obviously, we're at week 18 now of the NFL season. First time that's happened. Um, and I had to watch the abysmal game of the Steelers versus the Ravens. It was <laughs> such a bad game for so long, but I think Jacob, I think you have a lot of strong opinions about that, considering the Steelers are your team. So I'll let you talk about that one. Thank you, Peter. Yeah, I mean, I've said it. Uh, I've said it before. I'll continue to say it. Uh, Mike Tomlin gets way more hate than he really does deserve. Um, this team really didn't have, you know, they probably shouldn't have made the playoffs. They had a very difficult schedule. Um, beforehand, I calculated it. Um, there, I couldn't, uh, I didn't calculate the losses, but, um, the teams the Steelers played had 147 wins at the time I calculated. It, and that was like, what, almost immediately after the game, they, um, you know, they fought through it. They, um, you know, clearly didn't have the best offensive line. Um, they didn't have like a very uh, like a lot of veterans, um, you know, up at front um, or outside on the receivers or at running back. But they still, you know, managed to get the job done. And as long as there's not a tie, which is like there, there shouldn't be a tie. Um, they will make the playoffs. And I'm not saying they'll do well in the playoffs, but you know what? I'm very happy that you know Ben can find you know can leave. Um, you know, having gone in the postseason as opposed to you not even uh, making it up to that point. So, yeah. Can I ask you who doesn't think Mike Tomlin's a good coach? Because I have never heard anyone say that. Um, honestly, a lot of Steelers fans. I was just about um, to say that. <laughs> yeah, honestly, a lot of Steelers fans don't like, um, you know, are not uh, very happy with Mike Tomlin. Um, and I also just don't think he gets as much credit as he deserves from the media. Um, I mean, you always have these, and like you know, I know Raj, um, you know, used an NFL memes as a reference last or what the last <laughs> uh, you know, podcast. Um, <laughs> NFL memes are like we're crucifying the Steelers last year. And they're um, still they're laid off. Yeah, and laid off a little bit, but you know, they still like the Steelers aren't very. Um, I guess. You know, well liked team. If you aren't a Steelers fan, so um, yeah, I think that he's done a phenomenal job um, given the players and the talent he has on this roster. And um, you know, he just doesn't get enough credit for that. I think your roster though is like low key talented. Like I was low thinking key, of it today. Though. Yeah, because like I don't know. I was going through it today, and I was like, your running back is better than the Ravens running back. Your wide receivers are better than the Ravens wide receivers. Your defense is better than the Ravens defense. So then I'm like, the problem is you don't have a quarterback or an offensive line, which is really important in football. But like, it's not like you guys don't have good skill positions and you guys have a good defense. Well, yes and no, because we have very inexperienced receivers. So like, for example, um, a couple of weeks ago, Chase Claypool, you know, he didn't, get the ball up to the um, 
uh, rev, so we could snap the ball, and it killed some um, time off the clock. Um, on top of that, Deontay Johnson, although he was better this year, he, um, le- I believe he led the league in drops this past season. And, you know, he is, um, you know, f- he can run routes very well. But um, at the end of the day, if you don't catch the ball, the route you run doesn't really matter. So uh, we have, like, we clearly have talented players. Like, I, I'm, a, like I'm a 100% with you on that. Just... I don't feel as if the players, um, you know, perform well um, or as well as they could. And it might not, you know, some of that may, you, maybe you could argue could be on Tomlin, but at the end of the day, um, he can't go catch the ball for the receivers. So I think that all things considered, um, I think he's done a pretty good job. I think, um, you know, the Steelers, the defense, you know, they played, oh, they played okay this year. Um, I mean, they led the league in sacks, but they also gave up the most rushing yards. Um, so, you know, it's, it was definitely an off year um, relative to uh, years. So I would say the Steelers, it, I'd say it's impressive what Mike Tomlin said with this team. You know who I else, who else I think deserves a lot more credit? Dave Gettleman. Because honestly, it's been impressive how awful of a GM he's been to take the New York Giants, one of the most like well-known like football organizations out there, and take them from, you know, like they were like, yeah, they were fine after like the Super Bowls, like whatever. He comes in the building and they have had five straight seasons of never being above 500. Like genuinely impressive how awful this team has been. I honestly, at this point, I had to watch a highlight from NFL memes. And let me see what the actual caption of it was. It was, I think it might've just been imagine being a giants fan when I had to watch Jake from state farm, I guess, take the ball and on our three yard line, do a QB sneak on third and nine. Just saw that. I, yeah, like, it's uh, rough. Yeah. Like I, like Watching that, it's like this isn't a team. Like this is like what is this? <laughs> this is a joke. It's like the Harlem Globetrotters versus like the Washington Generals or whoever they're like fake enemy team is. It's like that's the Giants. Like they're the other team. That's just mm-hmm. like a joke. Like I don't. It's so painful to watch, and I know damn well they're gonna screw up the draft. They're gonna hire the wrong coach. They're gonna hire the wrong GM. And it's just going to be nothing but pain for the next 10 years, even though for the past, like, seven, it's already been terrible. But, oh, my God. It's, it just hurts. And I know you Philly fans are really happy because I'm suffering and you guys are in the playoffs. So, have yeah. your fun. Yeah. Peter, the problem with the Giants is, like, not one. I wouldn't say any position on that team is, like, oh, yeah, we're really good here. Like, your defense can play well. Like, you know, it's not like you guys don't have some talent there, but you're just, like, a mid-defense, and you're, like, kind of streaky. But, like, you're not solid at quarterback. You're not solid at wide receiver. Your offense is good. You're not really solid at running back either. Saquon already hurt. And you don't even know if your coach is good, and they're going to bring him back again. So it's, like, there's no position on the team where you're, like, well, we're doing well there. It's just all bad. Yeah. Oh, and don't worry. I saw a report that our defensive coordinator might be leaving to become a head coach. <laughs> so we are beyond screwed. Imagine get imagine getting hired after leading your team to a thirteen season. Like be like, oh yeah, we want you to coach our team. Oh yeah, we want you to be a head coach. <laughs> like, oh my god, there's no way. Yeah, and, and that it's just it's rough over there. But Philly, Raj, and I we're thriving. It's all good in uh, the hood. Yeah, obviously it's been a good uh good season for the Eagles. When I didn't expect it to be a good season at all, I expected. Me I think either. I said four and thirteen was my guess, and we're nine wow. nine and eight, which is like nine and eight. But like we really didn't even play the last game. Like yesterday, yesterday when when the Eagles played, we're recording this on Sunday, so um. They didn't even play their starters, and unlike the Giants, the Eagles kind of have their act together on an organizational level, just constantly bringing in like good players and just doing so. I mean, Howie Roseman gets a lot of um, hate out there mm-hmm. for how he drafts, but like besides drafting, he does really bring in good pieces. I mean, wide receiver drafting is the only thing that I think he really does bad 
which is unfortunate. Maybe you need to get another wide receiver scout in there. But like besides from drafting wide receivers, has consistently built good teams, even when you think it's going to be a down year. Yeah, we also have three first round picks coming up. So yeah, and the Colts aren't going to make the playoffs. So that pick's even going to be better. If you get in the playoffs and you win a game or two, you just keep oh. pushing that pick back. We're just going to we're loaded. And the Dolphins didn't make the play, aren't going to make the playoffs. So we have th- two picks that are non playoff teams, and then we'll probably get first rounded. So like, we're going to have like a couple high teens and a 20 pick or something like that. I'll take it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's fantastic. It's great. Um, and yeah, and I don't know about the draft class much, but I'm definitely going to be looking into it because unlike the Giants, um, there's hope for next year. Oh, God. <laughs> Yeah, it's just painful. Peter, I think you could do better if you went on the Madden and, uh, you know, did a Madden franchise and just started Dude, trading away all your players. For like, I, I'm not even lying. There have been multiple times where I'm like, I think I could do it. Like, I know there's so much, like, beyond, like, being a GM that, like, I don't see. But just, like, looking at it, it's like, it's not that hard. You look at the team. Oh, the offensive line is terrible. Draft offensive linemen. Why are we drafting a receiver? What are we doing? Like, it's like I like I I don't know. Like, is there something that I'm missing? There's got to be. Like, th- there's no way that a dude can be a general manager for five years, go like 19 and like 40 something, and then keep his job, be able to retire from the team, not even get fired, or like retire from the team, and like he just gets to walk. It's like how. How does this happen? Like, how do we? Uh, I don't <laughs> you want to hear, hear another NFL meme statistic? What? Let's hear. It. Giants won't carry a full fifty-three man roster into the game. They have yeah. two hundred seventy-nine thousand of cap space according to NFLPA public cap report, so they wouldn't be able to do so anyways. They carried forty-five people into the in the last game today. Yeah, they couldn't so, even no. field an entire. So game. Yeah. not only do you guys suck, you're also a poverty franchise now. Literally, and I don't. It's in New York City. How how are we a poverty franchise? The franchise is worth like four point two billion dollars, and it's like, oh, we can't figure out money. Like, how? Like, what are we? How is this even possible? God. Yeah, it, it, it's tough over there. I think sometimes just general managers try to be smart instead of just taking the easy. And sometimes it works out. Because I think if you ask people in the draft that was recent if the um, Bengals should have drafted an offensive lineman or Jamar Chase, I think about 75% of people were like, yeah, dra- draft an offensive lineman. Forget who they, forget, oh, Penny Sewell yeah. fell to them. So, like, everyone's like, oh, draft that guy. And he's, he's played really well for the Lions, too. Um, so, like, they were like, everyone draft Penny Sewell. And then they draft Jamar T- Chase, and now Jamar Chase is, like, the best rookie receiver ever. So, like, it works out. But, I don't know, sometimes GMs just try to be daniel jones pick or like picking a guy you never heard of and it's great when it works but when it doesn't work that's when you lose your job yeah except he never lost his job speaking of losing jobs (laughs) Uh, let's talk about our favorite football player ab oh god (laughs) oh yeah (laughs) my god i hate soon my god what is this entire situation with the bucks and ab at first, I thought he was like legitimately like mentally unwell. Then it was like all the stuff came out that he was saying, and it's like, oh well, like they were trying to like cut me, whatever, blah blah, like all that. And I'm like, oh, maybe he's actually right for once. And then it's like he just keeps talking, and it's like the more he keeps talking, the less I believe him. <laughs> like, yeah. like for those, stop. Yeah, for those listening who aren't aware of the situation, um. Football player Antonio Brown ended up taking off his uniform and just like causing a whole charade as he like ran off the field and then took to Twitter and decided to like put out text messages and say why the team was it's been a big back and forth. If you aren't aware of it, go look it up, go watch the video. It's pretty embarrassing. Oh, yeah. I mean, Antonio Brown has a long history, but I mean, it's one of the craziest things to happen. Like, I mean, one guy retired in the game last year. And this is, like, worse. Yeah, because it was, like, during the game. Like, the offense was on the field. And he just, like, threw his pads down, 
threw his shirt into the stands, took a selfie with a fan, and then walked <laughs> through the end zone and left. Like, oh, God. Yeah, because he was saying something about how, like, how apparently Bruce Arians, like, told him to go in, even though he had an ankle injury. But then Antonio Brown says, like, no, I'm not going to play because, like, I'm hurt. And then Bruce Arians apparently cut him on the sideline and said, like, you're done. Like, you're not playing with us anymore. And then they left, which, like, if that exact situation happened, like, I can get being really pissed off. Not that reaction, but, like, I can understand that. But when he drops, um, did, like, what like what music did he drop? Was it a diss track? Was it, like, a, was it just, like, a music video? It's a video? diss track on it? Pit. Pit, not the palace. Like, Exactly. It's like, <laughs> why was that the first thing you did when you leave? Dude, he's like, a, you're really not. He's a super your gremlin. Case. Dude, he's an absolute <laughs> goblin, yeah, like, man. I just love that it sounds like a 2014 like sports highlight like song, <laughs> like those compilations. Because <laughs> like that's back when he was like in the prime of his career, or whatever. And he's just like makes that song again. Oh my god. <laughs> Ugh. It's yeah, just, I mean, I, I think like it hurts to watch, watch just a good football player. Like, as a career, it just like it's just hurts to watch, man. Because like obviously he's a head case, but like it's like watching him on the field. It's like wow, oh, like this throwing this away because I have absolutely no idea why. Yeah, for sure. Sign him because there's so much um, drama associated with him, and you don't want that necessarily to be like you know in the locker room. But so, respect- respectfully, um, like, those texts could totally be fake. Like the text literally reads like "This is BA" referring to his coach. Like, is that how you, is that how people text? Like, "This is BA. Be ready for the next game." I, like, I, I, I guess. Yeah. Like. Oh well, yeah, I mean, I feel like if we if they weren't real, I think we would have like. I feel like they would have proven that already. Right, yeah. like, yeah, they I must think be. the text messages have to be real, like, um, so, and I mean, we could probably go back and like check because, um, I want to say, like, uh, from what I've heard, he wasn't, um, like, he was questionable to play and he didn't practice some of the days going up to that game, so, like, I mean, that's all stuff that can be, you know, checked and verified. Um, and I also don't like. I highly doubt like his legal team would pro- let him go on to like Twitter and all the, these other platforms and say all this like you know random st- like all these like you know allegations without being you know without like being you know truthful. Yeah, and like that's the whole thing about the situation is like if he was able to like actually talk through like what was going on and like explain a situation to everybody, I feel like he could- would have had like a much better point instead of just making himself look like he is crazy even though like if he's not like dude if you're in the right in the situation why are you doing this like you easily could just like release these text messages talk about it whatever and then just wait and then let the public be like oh like he's in the right in the situation whatever versus that <laughs> like there's there was definitely a way better way for him to handle. Yeah, I mean, it's simple. It's just, it doesn't matter like what all the side stuff is. Like he's he said, she said, like whatever that is. Like just how you handle things is just part of being in sports and being a professional athlete. And it's sad that it's not just AB. A ton of professional athletes handle situations bad. I mean, all the time in the NBA, you see people getting fined for lashing out at the refs. Like Julius Randle just got fined twenty five thousand dollars for the New York Knicks for like for like yeah. telling yeah. I think it was like telling the fans of New York something and it's just like you just gotta hit yeah. like it I, I mean it's tough I get it they're like they have all this like spotlight on them and like I don't envy like that situation but at the same time it's like you guys just gotta handle the situation better because it's just part of what you have to handle as a job yeah and you know besides all this like crazy NFL stuff going on I know Jacob wants to talk about college football because Alabama's in the championship yet again. Blah, blah, blah. They're playing Georgia. What's your prediction, Jacob? Who's going to win? 
Um, I mean, I could see it going both ways. I think that if Georgia's quarterback, Stetson Bennett, um, doesn't turn over the ball, um, thus Georgia winning the turnover battle, I think that Georgia will win the game. But if Alabama wins the turnover battle, I think that that's – I think Alabama's going to win it. Um, I mean, Alabama's number two receivers out, so it can also be, you know, that's also uh, much different than when they played um, just like a month ago. So I think it can honestly be a toss up. It's difficult to play t- a team and beat a team uh, twice, especially um, considering how close, we, um, you know, they played. But I think you guys don't, you know, appreciate college football enough. But what are your predictions? Even if you just don't, if, even if you don't know that Georgia. much about college football. Georgia. Well, actually, that was, you know, I'm going to eat my okay. words on that one. That was a way more, like, unbiased yeah. opinion than I thought you were going to say. <laughs> I, no, I will I mean, retract I'm... that that sarcasm that I was giving you earlier. But, like, you know, like, I do, like, I love college football. I do, th- I have a feeling Nick Saban, he's just not going to get out coached. Like, that's just not going to happen. So I think it'll come down to just, like, your talent and everything. And I think, I think it is going to be a bit of a toss-up. Personally, I do think Alabama is just going to win because... I just can't really see Georgia like not like for for lack of a better term fumbling the bag and um, being an Atlanta sports team. I mean, it's a little bit tough to uh, not have that happen in this championship. But I mean, with with college football for me, it's like I love watching it up until like the bowl games and the playoffs because at that point it's like it. I don't really care. Like everything going up to that. Like I think it's. Honestly, I do think it is more entertaining because teams can be like more evenly matched. You can really see like how players can like take over games, and they're, they're so much younger than NFL players. It's like you can really see like them explode onto the scene. But then it's like when it comes to like the bowl games, it's like I don't really care who's playing in the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl or whatever. It's like I like it's like it. I don't really care at that point. <laughs> And then, because like the playoffs are like four teams that are get voted on. It's like it's not even based on like strength of schedule or like whatever. It's just like some people get into a room and say like, "Oh, this team should be in," and then they're just in. It's like, oh well, any other team that was doing well just can't really. There's nothing they can do at that point. Well, Justin, I know you also had an issue with the playoff format. Would you agree with Peter, or do you have like other? Yeah. Well, first, I think Alabama is going to outright win the game. I don't think they played hard against Cincinnati. I think. Georgia look like they took that game really seriously. Um, Alabama is going to be rested. Bryce Young isn't going to turn the football over. And I think Alabama wins by like 10, 13 points or something like that. Anyway, though, um, playoff format, it sucks. Like, first of all, no one cares about college football in like the middle of the regular season when people are like playing like random games, like when Pitt plays like New Hampshire. Like, no one cares about the game short in the regular season and make an actual playoffs that people care about. Like, it's just I don't like I don't care about Alabama and Cincinnati playing each other because it's a super lopsided game. The one four matchup is always super lopsided, so there's only really two games you care about. Just make it a eight team, ten team if you want to give by uh, by weeks like format, and then actually like have teams that are competitive play each other. Like for like an example, Pitt and was a ten seed, so I think if we would have had a competitive it depends how many teams you put into the playoffs if you did a 16 team we'd be a competitive matchup but like it would just give you some kind of like drama to this like drama to it and also like it doesn't make the four or five selection as tough because i think when you move i mean you'll still have the problem with like if you do a 10 team like oh who's the 11 team who gets kicked out of like the contention or whatnot but i don't know i just i don't think it I don't think it works well. I just think that like I don't care about a fourteen playoff, and there's only two good games. And college football regular season is already just like way too long. Too many games people don't care about. Like I mean, like Alabama plays like some random team down south every single opening day, opening game, and they win by like fifty. Like, like who wants to watch that crap? Well, I wouldn't say Miami is like a random team. No, no but I'm not saying, like, okay. I don't know. I don't know what your schedule looks like, but like. You, like, I don't know what your specific schedule looks like, but a ton of teams just across like the um, college football just play random teams in the beginning of the year, and they play, like Pitt has again Pitt has played. I forgot their they play. I think we UMass was our first game this year. Was it UMass? Like, yeah, and we beat yeah, and we yeah, beat yeah, them UMass. by fifty. 
Um, we played, I think we played Austin PV uh, last year, and oh, and we yeah, won eight, oh, right. yeah, to zero or fifty five to three. So it's like just those games. Like, why are they on the schedule? Like, clearly we they can't compete, and it just like like in the NFL, every game is legitimately. Like, we just saw Jacksonville beat the Colts to make the playoffs. Like, you have to take every team ser- any given yeah, Sunday. Any given Sunday, a team can lose. We've watched the Detroit Lions take the Ravens. To a sixty, what was it, sixty-six yard field goal to win the game? Like just ridiculous, like situations where like NFL teams, professional athletes, like they play hard every single week, and the talent is there enough to up- make upsets. Co- There's very few college teams that can upset the top dogs. So like, why are these like stupid games happening? There's, there's, well, my, there's my. I rant. I can understand your, I can understand your point, but then what do you think the playoffs gonna do? Like. I don't think that having a play like expanding the playoffs is going to change anything. I still still feel like okay, eventually you're going to have you know the same couple teams getting to the semifinals because play team like you know football is just played better in the southeast. You know, people just it is like um, you know anybody that's not you know a fan of the SEC, you know, well the SEC has the two teams in the playoff that you know in the championship game this year. So um, I think that by expanding the playoff, um, okay. Alabama is going to make the playoff every year, then, um, and it's less special when a team makes the playoff. I would say, um, if you do expand it, um, yeah, but... I, I guess I understand what you're saying, but I mean, um, about random matchups. But I think that in college football, losing a game has more importance than in the NFL because if you lose a game in college football and your goal is to make the playoffs, as it should be for you know. Teams should want to try to make the playoffs. Um, you know, if you lose a game and you lose uh, another game, you're basically out. So I think that that's also a thing that makes college football so much more special yeah. than the NFL. No, like I don't think that's true at all. Because like, like the whole point is like the Green Bay Packers are going to be the number one seed, and they went thirteen and four. They like lost four football games because there's four teams out there who can also play at the level of the Green Bay Packers on any given Sunday. If you like making having a like a league where like if you have one loss like when you're UCF and you can lose zero games and not make the playoffs, it's like it just means that like the regular season's almost like pointless. Like they should just take all the the top eight teams and just throw them in the playoffs every year because it's not going to change much. Like I, I just don't see a, a way in which like Alabama only loses once and that like makes your league better. Yeah, and also if you expect. Well, teams just have to get better. Teams can, I get no, it. but teams can't. Even past the lead. You will teams can't get better with a short yeah. playoff because teams like Alabama and like Clemson in recent history, not this year or last year, but uh, um, like Georgia, like these teams constantly get in the playoffs. Like no, like no really good recruit is going to want to go to these smaller schools, ranked ten or something, because constantly, like they're like, well, I'll never make the national championship game. But if you expand the playoffs and these teams that are like seven, eight, nine around that range, they might get better recruits and make the competition better because they'll finally be like, oh, at least I'll make the playoffs and get some national TV attention, make one upset happen, and get pushed into a later round. It's just like there's there's not four cut, there's not four playoff spots. There's three playoff spots every year because Alabama always gets in. So like you're just essentially you're just recruit, recruiting people to go to the really good schools so they can make the playoffs. Like. Is there's no there's a reason why like Alabama always has a Heisman winner because all the good players are there. So I, like I don't see a world in which like college football is better than the NFL. Like it's just you're making an elitist league based on recruiting and like having good history, and that's not what people want to see. Well, I disagree again. Um, I think that um, with the transfer portal, with more players coming into the transfer portal than ever, um, you know some players. Um, you know, do want to win national championships, but a lot of players want to play and create value for themselves. So by going to a school like Alabama, um, unless you're really, really good, uh, and look at how uh, you know well Bryce Young has played this year. I mean, he won the Heisman. He had a fantastic season, but then again, he got beat out last year by Mac Jones. So that just tell you know speaks to how good Mac Jones was. Um, but. He could have transferred away or just gone to another school, but he wanted to stick out, uh, you know, the process. And you know, you know I respect that. 
But you also have players that don't want to do that, and they can go transfer to other schools. Um, for example, um, one of Alabama's backup running backs went and transferred to Cincinnati, and you know he created a lot of value for himself. He had a very good, um, productive season. So I think that expanding the playoff is the counterbalance. I think that the um, best counterbalance at the moment is going to be the transfer portal so then players can get on the field and play as soon as possible. And then on top of that, I mean, uh, I mean, the best recruiting class this year is Texas A&M. I mean, Texas A&M just beat Alabama this year. Um, I think that's very beneficial to Alabama as a wake-up call, but um, you have different teams that, you know, hey, Alabama and Georgia, they might be two and three, but Texas A&M just recruited the best recruiting class, like, in the history of the, um, you know, most notable um, recruiting website. So I disagree. I think that I can understand your frustration, but then again, um, I think that the relationships, the traditions, the uh, overlap of coaching is what makes co- – um, that's some of the things that make college football better. So, um, I mean, on top of that, I grew up – like, you know, I grew up watching a decent amount of um, SEC football having lived down there. So maybe there's that um, side of things, but – no, I mean, oh, I'm not really like I don't really feel like I'm missing out with college football. It's just like if you want to make like, like if you want to make something that more people care about, like like I, every time the college football playoffs come up, I'm like, oh man, that's on TV. Like I just don't care. And I mean, fortunately, like the NIL system, like paying the athletes for their name, is going to end up helping other teams around because they know they can like make money before they get drafted. But like I don't like I just don't think I just don't think this system's good i don't think it competes at all with like the nfl but i again it's also a culture thing because i know the south thinks a lot differently than the northeast fellows on this podcast as well yeah oh well anyone else got any hot takes on the uh, the anyone else got any takes on the ncaa before jake up i I disagree how about you yes so i think (laughs) i'll start with my prediction so i think Bama will win, but they are going to struggle because it is hard to beat the same team twice. That goes for any team in any sport. So I think that's going to happen. I think Bama will pull through, but I think they are going to struggle to the very end. And as for the playoff bracket format, I agree with Justin's 10-team bracket with the top two teams getting it by. I think that's the... I would think that'd be the best By the way, format. if that works, I'm not really sure. I kind of just like pulled that out of my ass. Yeah. Something like that. Something like that. I, I think that'd be more fair than what the hell they're doing now. Well, then again, they're going to be Alabama's always going to make the playoff, and then you're going to have um, an All SEC um, national championship game. So I think that the I think um, the um, transfer portal is going to be something good, and then honestly, just wait until Nick Saban retires. <laughs> Because, I mean, while he's at Alabama, Alabama is always going to be. Yeah, but then there's. Raj, w- Raj, actually, no. Here, can we uh, let Raj have a time to say a thoughtful and intelligent yes, comment yes. Uh, no. without any bias and, you know, <laughs> back it up to some form of statistic about. Yeah, we football. might be here all night. <laughs> you said that you're a fan of what you wanted Georgia to win. Could you name one receiver for Georgia for me without looking <laughs> up? That's currently on Georgia's roster. Oh, geez. Bryce Young, Bryce Hall, Bryce Harper, don't matter. UGA by seven. That's all. <laughs> yeah, okay. there it is so where's your intelligent comment raj i have intelligence i mean yeah you go to pit your pre-med pit so i would assume that you're a relatively intelligent guy well, i mean is he really rooting for uga or does he just no, want, I just want to, lose? to lose exactly so yeah what like what do you think is going to happen what's your take on the playoff format do you, and, like what's your take on uh it being comparable well to the playoff NFL? format if it was that little 10 team thing just was talking about Pitt would be in the playoffs and i'd be very happy uh no, i think these well, new year six bowls are kind of stupid they should just make it like nfl Do you think that, like, I mean, what would you think would have happened if Pitt made the playoffs? If Pitt made the playoffs. I don't know. Anything could have happened. You saw what Pickett was playing, and you no, were down yeah, again. But, like, think about, like, just think about it for a second, Jacob. Like, if we, if Pitt had all their players against Michigan State, and Michigan State had all their players, it would have been a nice, probably good competitive game, and the winner would have had some momentum and tried to go, like, 
take down another team. And then you don't need to see Bama play in the first week and just like kill a team that's like ranked number 10 or something. They'll go right, they'll still go play face a different team, but at least like gives more showcase to these other schools and incentivizes people who are like around like 10 and whatnot to play hard and incentivize incentivizes to players to not sit games because like Bryce Young isn't going to sit so he doesn't get injured and Bryce Young wouldn't sit next year if he was doing that so well I think that I mean what you just said I think if a player doesn't have an incentive to play then that's like not good in, in general I feel like that's just an issue with that player and that program if they're not you know they if they don't have like an incentive to just perform well and like you know because performing well regardless of I mean Nick Saban used to be in the NFL and um I mean, he tells his players that regardless of who you're like going up against, um, he'll watch the tape, and like the um, NFL, um, you know, management will watch the tape of players. Um, it doesn't matter, you know, who's, you know, who are they playing, what time it is in the game, all of that stuff. Um, you know, they want to see how well you perform. So I feel like you should perform well regardless of, um, and you know, try to do your best regardless of the situation. Yeah, I mean, I don't agree with you, but we'll. I guess we'll agree to disagree for now. <laughs> what? Okay. Okay. <laughs> for 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 context, well, right. Raj is sending memes in a chat. Yeah, Raj is sending well. memes in the chat that. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> after you two have just been battling for the past fifteen minutes, I think we're going to wrap it up here on the Washed Athlete Podcast. Uh, if anybody has any last remarks, uh, get them in now. Because uh, if not, uh, I guess we'll see everybody again uh, when we record our next episode. I hope everybody that was listening enjoyed this, and stay tuned for the next one. All right. Style it. I'm up a pit, not the palace. I gotta run it, style it. Hit on the gas, make it growl it. Uh.